Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Hopefully, everybody's been getting uh, a bit of value from the last few videos and seeing these trades play out in live time. Um, you know, again, just reiterating simplicity, working from the high and low of the day, high and low of the week, waiting for the equity markets to open. 3.30, sorry, that should be 3 a.m. 3 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. Again, if you're not sure what time that is where you are, Google it. The importance of waiting is that often once the markets are open, we'll see a stop hunt to one of the extremes um, or a move from when that market opens. So often times the market will move into a certain direction or build up a block of orders and trap traders and then once the market equity markets open they'll use it as a as an opportunity to either issue a stop hunt um, or to move the market in the opposite direction double zeros and fifties yesterday we talked about the 12 candle rule using that as a window of time to really get laser like focused in especially in the London hour once this equity market opens and using that opportunity to position ourselves at one of the high or lows of the day in line with the direction of where the smart money wants to move the market for that session today we're just going to go over the 50s and double zeros I've removed my other quarter levels from the charts for today's lesson I do normally have them in a lighter tone there just for reference, but I've been reinforcing to you the zeros and fifties. <clears throat> These are levels where institutions will tend to enter the market um, or where a lot of pending orders may be placed or where they will look to position themselves in the market. I don't know why, obviously, maybe it's just a numbers issue. I'm sure a lot of algorithms work from these levels as well. But these four steps, and again, we're going to add a couple more steps in here as we get even more specific in time with each video. We'll peel the onion back a bit more and we'll get things down right down to analyzing the stop hunts and uh, perhaps even better areas to enter in with a really tight stops. So again, simplicity, we can duplicate all of this and we can scale it. So no matter what they throw at us, those principles are constants. And our job is to stay out of stuff that's going to cost us money and potentially just trap us into a trade that we end up nursing for five or six hours that doesn't go anywhere uh, when we want to be in the market and be out of the market in an hour or two and be finished with our work and be able to scale that up when, when we get good at trading it. So talking about double zeros and fifties today, I'm going to scrunch this chart up quite tight. <clears throat> And you can do this on your own charts. We're going to go through a few pairs and just show you that the significance. And actually, I'm going to take off a couple of these other indicators for today. Actually, we'll even get rid of the, well, we'll leave the, the colors on for now. Again, the blue box is the Asian session just heading into the Europe changeover. The green box is the hour prior to the U.S. equities markets opening. But I want to paint a picture for you just in terms of when you come to the screen each day, having a plan. And that plan should involve identifying major round number levels, potentially where the market could either stop on out to or trade out to and also reverse back to. Um, now, when you have a plan and you come prepared, you could have a couple of scenarios. One is that they work one side of the market and move to the other. Uh, or vice versa on the opposite side. And in, in some situations, you could identify potentially what could be a trending day. Um, and it's important that you be able to identify these major levels because obviously we want to position ourselves in the market in one of these moves as close to numbers as possible. And obviously if we're jumping in somewhere in between, uh, we're not sure at that stage if the market could reverse. So we could be caught somewhere in the middle and the market could reverse back towards the opposite number level, stopping us out. And as we move further away from numbers, our stops will increase. 
uh, with size. Obviously, if, if you're inside of a box, it's important that we, we, we have the tightest stop loss possible. In a lot of cases, depending on the pair that you're looking at, the Asian range will often occupy one of these 50 pip boxes, especially on pound New Zealand, uh, pound Aussie, sometimes maybe the pound yen will go through the different pairs. But in the other pairs, pound Canadian, pound US, and the uh, pound Swiss, most of the time they're, they'll usually be consolidated inside of a 25 pip box where the smaller quarter levels are on your normal charts. But you can see where the market will often turn off of major round numbers and if you're heading into a session obviously the high and the low have precedent inside of that range but with the idea being that at some point depending on how the market breaks out in the Europe open the Europe session we may be looking at a stop hunt or a breakout of for a continuation and we want to be able to position ourselves off these round numbers this gives us the greatest opportunity possibly to participate in at least a 50 pip or greater move. If, we are, if you're positioning yourself off of a quarter level, not to say that they also cannot be good areas to enter in at, but these 50s and round zeros are very significant on the longer time frames as well. So we'll just bring this back. I'll let you sort through these on your own charts. I'm gonna go back and we'll just remove uh, the indicators again, the high and low and the high and low of the week so we can get a clear view of the market. This is the pound yen. <clears throat> so you can again see that each pair, the Asian range may actually be spread around a quarter level. These boxes again are 50 pips. But, but we can identify possible major areas to enter the market when the stop hunt has occurred. Now some people have asked me about, can you trade the stop hunt? Absolutely. I don't. Uh, there, there are some trade setups, which we will go through, which I call a 50 pip shift. When the market moves 50 pips early in Asia, and usually it's to a high or a low of the week, there are opportunities at where the market will move as the Asian market closes and Europe is opening. And that can often be the higher low of the day. So more importantly though, we want to be able to step back on the outsides of these boxes if you're trapped on the inside so if we called a big box a 50 pip the, the box this smaller high and low consolidates traders in the middle of a range at which point you can see they can be stopped out even if you're in the right direction they make it difficult for you to not experience either uh, heat against your position or getting stopped out or lifting your stop or taking a loss the market will often revisit these levels as we saw yesterday on the announcements. They, they took the market out 50 pips on a couple of the pairs, uh, pound New Zealand being one of them. <clears throat> and then on the news, auctioned it right back up to where people would have been stopped out who shorted that market if they did not take a profit. And we've, we've talked about that in the other videos, learning to take a profit. Uh, preset your stop loss. In, and your profit target, bef know where you're going before you get into the trade. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is a, you do all this work to get into a 50 pip move, which is over very fast. And then you didn't take profits or you didn't have your entry, your exit price put in and the market came back on the news and stopped you out immediately. At which point you probably got frustrated and maybe shorted it again. And then they jammed in down low and came back to get you again which is very common. So again, just coming back to what we were talking about with uh, 50s and zeros, very important uh, to identify uh, these levels. So we talked about the high and the low of the day, the high and the low of the week. We've talked about the equity opening times and often that first hour of the 12 candle window, which is the first four candles, will trigger one of these extremes. And that gives us a reference point to trade back to later in a lot of cases. So the market in this case came back down to the numbers, went long and stop hunted in the London hour, stop hunted back up into inside of this box to get the person who was short at break even before they 
resume their move down. Now, start thinking about this. The original move into the Europe, the Asian closed Europe open, triggered orders at the high of the box. So traders who were long up here might have took profits. They might have triggered pending orders for breakout traders. It might have stopped out traders that were short in here. In that changeover hour, London opened up, triggered stops on the bottom. It then auctioned back up inside, but it failed to take out the extreme, but it got traders who had gone to break even before shifting down again to the numbers, at which point that left us with orders again up top, which they were obviously protecting, and the trend being at this stage possibly down to continue, but London gave us an anchor point low which traders would have took as a long signal. So again, start identifying with all of these areas as potential areas where orders have built up. Now, if we had the blue uh, line on here to signify the, the low of the, the previous day, traders would have seen that this was a breakout. So originally they triggered breakout traders, then they've come up and set a high point for the session. They've auctioned down, took out traders who were long, triggered breakout orders short, and then gone back up to get the traders who were short up top before resuming the downward move. And it's important, this is the pre-market US session, but it's important again to identify that this occurred around numbers. And that's what's important going into the US equities open. You were below the numbers in a down move, New York auctions up inside of the move into the open. So start, We if we talk about always working from the high or the low, <clears throat> You want to know when, when something goes back up inside that that's a stop hunt against traders that are already short in the market. And then more importantly, resuming that move came off of numbers and then bang, 50 pips back with the trend. So again, just focusing on these round numbers can give you a bit of clarity and direction of where you might where the market may be heading based on your analysis, but also areas where the market can either pick up speed for, for movement to follow through to the other side of that 50 pip box. So either from 50 to zero or zero to 50, or where it may reach potential resistance to any trade that you're in. And most of the time these trades either exhaust at a level, trade off of that level, or blow through that level. So again, in that 12 candle window, the most important thing you can ask yourself if you're entering into the market is, am I in the trap or am I in the, tr the trade? And you can also see that with these movements, even with a quarter level in the middle of this box, why if you're getting in at any of the numbers, why your stops should probably never be more than 20 pips. Because if you're getting in close to the numbers, if you're wrong, you're wrong by at least 25 to 50 pips or more. Uh, traders who might have went long anywhere in here and they didn't and they lifted their stops or they averaged into losing trade, held on to this all the way back to the low of the week and at some point being down 100, 200 pips, uh, I'm sure most traders would have either closed that out in disgust and um, been, been emotionally destroyed or blowing out their trading accounts. So again, using that as a reference point, your stops uh, in most cases should never be more than probably 25 pips. I try to, you know, you can get them down as low as 10 or 12 in some cases, and um, using smaller time frames, which we're gonna go into later. Uh, the, the, this, the most important things I want you to grasp right now are working from the high and the low, sticking to the, the equity market opening times, using round numbers, 50s and zeros, and focusing your trading on a 12 candle window. This is designed to do a few things, okay? We talked about simplicity, duplication, scalability, but also it's designed to keep you out of potentially messy situations when the market may not be going anywhere except trapping traders into a block of volume. And again, not to say that there aren't other great trades, because there are, and they do occur outside of these time windows, but when you can duplicate something over and over and over again and keep it really, really simple and you can scale it up, why, why bother looking at all that other stuff? So stay disciplined traders, stay focused. I hope you got some value out of today's video. 
Have a great trading day. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.